So thank you, Madi, for the invitation, for inviting myself and Tanya. And I thought it was really lovely. Um, because I've known Tanya for, I mean, <laughs> close to 20 years, uh, remembering your pieces at Randolph Street Gallery. Yes. Um, so there is uh, something of a, of, a, of a familiarity with the body of work as a whole, but we've never gotten into it yeah. about, about the work. We're a little slow. We take us Yeah, right, a while exactly. We were waiting for this moment. <laughs> we knew it would come. Um, but I'd like to just, by way of introduction, say, just give some, something of a, uh, 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 apropos of today's t topic, uh, something of a backdrop or a context uh, for, for framing uh, the discussion. And we're going to go through um, uh, works by Tanya, and she's uh, agreed wonderfully to do a very small uh, performative excerpt of one of the pieces that we'll be ending with. And then I think I'll show a very small uh, fragment of a work by a younger artist, Ryan Tricartan, that I think says something about, uh, 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 I can't say the body politic, body slash politic, in terms of where, where I think uh, identity politics uh, 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 might be today, since I'll venture to say that. Um, but I'd like to begin with acknowledging uh, generationally um, that we are both sort of post 60s children, post 60s chillins. <laughs> and the, um, uh, uh, both literally, uh, obviously, professionally, art historically, uh, as an artist. But the role that minimalism played in the advent of performance art, and I'm using very broad brush strokes to paint this, uh, to say that minimalism's greatest uh, contribution, I think, Minimalism's dismantling of metaphor, so, so the creation of a purely uh, self-referential art, an art that didn't ref doesn't refer to anything outside of itself, right? So the ability for American art uh, to uh, completely banish the figure, right? And, uh, uh, and being uh, uh, willing to suffer the consequences, right? So on the one hand, going down to the Art Institute experiencing a Donald Judd or um, uh, who is it that did the Red Plank, a uh, work of minimal art. Um, the, who did the Red Plank? I can never remember who did it. John McCracken, John McCracken's Red Plank. I just remember that as a kind of a landmark piece for me when I moved to Chicago as an arts experience. It was that big Red Plank by John McCracken at the Art Institute. But the reinscription of the body uh, back onto the viewer so a certain recourse to phenomenology. In other words, there was not a figure represented in art. The figure uh, was oneself, the viewer, as they uh, experienced the artwork, right? Uh, so on the one hand, uh, uh, no figure, and then all figure, in a way. But that would lay the groundwork for uh, an explosion of uh, a, a renaissance of performance art, I think, as we've inherited now as a, as a, as a category, um, and an historical category for those of you who may have seen the Marina Abramovich show at MoMA. Obviously, one of the main catalysts for performance art were women artists at the time in the 1960s, right? The sort of uh, uh, banishing of the figure uh, uh, for those artists who felt uh, as though uh, they were already underrepresented within art, the idea of banishing the figure was an anathema. So for women artists to then say, no, 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 we ain't going out like that, right? And so uh, it's sort of a twofold renaissance in that respect, right? You've got a wave of feminist art. Uh, an explosion of that alongside, which is kind of the nuclear fuel rod, I would argue, for then performance art. Now the body uh, 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 in or on the terms of post-minimalism would have to be a literal body, right? There was no longer, uh, so the idea on the one hand of saying, okay, we're going to return to the figure, not in illusionistic terms, Right? So once you've successfully dismantled metaphor, on what terms could the figure be said to return? Right? The literal figure, the body, the presence of the performer. Okay? So you've got 
uh, Bruce Nauman, as an example, Vito Acconci, uh, Joan Jonas, uh, and we're going to begin with Anna Mendieta, uh, who maintained an integrity to minimalism, all the while sort of, uh, I guess I could say, backing their way out of it, right, with a return or a recourse to uh, uh, the body and uh, uh, in, a, in, in the most literal sense, the performer. So I'd like to lay that as the groundwork uh, for a discussion of, of Tanya's work. Now that would set up uh, uh, a, the cascade uh, of, of political questions surrounding the body would then be opened up. So post-minimalism doubling as the post-modern turn. So then once the reintroduction of the figure and the body with the question of whose body, right, would also allow for questions of race and gender uh, to be ushered into, um, into art, into visual arts. So uh, I think that's uh, probably key to keep in mind as we, as we move through, through Tanya's work. Um, and I think with that said, I guess we can launch into the discussion, beginning with uh, Anna Mendieta which is the first slide here. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with Anna Mendieta's work, uh, she, uh, uh, she's Cuban-born, uh, uh, best known for a series of, of a combination of uh, body-based performance works and uh, earthworks, where she uh, did a number of pieces where she would lie down on the ground, leaving some kind of uh, impression of her form uh, that would then be filled in. She done work with fire, with flowers, uh, uh, stone, a whole host of, 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 of materials. Um, so I think I'll leave it at that in terms of uh, giving the mic over to Tanya to talk a little bit about uh, Anna Mendieta and then your beginnings as a performance artist. Well, um, that works. Right? Yeah, this is back on. Okay. okay. Uh, well, first of all, to say that I will always make the most incredible effort to come back to Chicago because after Havana is the most important city for me and as an artist as well. Um, I did my MFA here and I've been growing up here, let's say, as an artist. So um, saying that, thank you, in a way, um, I wanted to, yeah, the, the, um, when I was a student, um, there was no way to study performance in Cuba, and I don't think in general, I mean, it was in the 80s, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know of any program actually that had that as a discipline to, to study. So I decided that I wanted to reconnect with this artist, I really like her work, and I was supposed to meet, and who died. Was uh, her status in Cuba? Uh, even she, though she was well known here in the yeah, States. Yeah, no, she was, it was very interesting because uh, in the 80s there was um, a kind of a renewal of the talks of getting back together as countries and uh, she was a key figure of the dialogue because she was going back and forth mm -hmm. and she was bringing people from New York uh, to Cuba and she brought some artists from Cuba to New York. So I think she was a uh, pivotal she was very important um, in Cuban culture. Yeah, she died as, yeah. tragically. She fell from a window yeah. in, in New York. What year? 85. 85. So that's another discussion. Feminists say yeah. she was thrown yes, by the Yes, that's another process. discussion. <laughs> let's not get there. Um, so basically what happened is because the encounter never happened, so I wanted to kind of meet her, so I started um, redoing all her work. So what is called now reenactment. Um. Uh, so I took all her works, uh, yeah, I took all her works and I redid it. And it was a gesture, actually I never gave importance to the objects, uh, mm -hmm. it was more the gesture, so I never saw myself as a performance artist, but as an artist who worked with gestures, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not all the action, but it's the gesture, what I'm interested in. And in this case, the gesture was to reestablish a figure that was politically controversial in Cuba because at the time I started doing the pieces, there was a lot of Cuban leaving the island for the United States and it became a huge political discussion and people who left were banned. It's like they force you to forget them mm -hmm. in a way. So for me, there was an act 
to play in a way I think I still do somehow with the institution in the sense that I was giving them what they preach, mm -hmm. but not maybe the way they want to hear it. So basically it's try to in a way confront the institution. When I say institution can be political instit institutions or, or people in power with their own propaganda, let's say, and see how far they will go with it. Yeah. At, at the time, I'm just curious about the, 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 when you, um, the idea of st studying performance. So the performance art, I, by the mid-80s, yeah. um, had achieved um, yeah. institutional <laughs> stature, I think in terms of at least teaching in, in, in Yeah, in, but not in Cuba, in, at least But not had, in Cuba, right? But we had a very important movement of more than performance, there were like happenings. happenings right, exactly. Cuba, I was going to so say the South American version yeah, of the actions, yeah, which yeah, has its yeah. own legacy. Yeah, and, and Latin America so. had a huge and extra important uh, tradition of performance. It's right. one of the most important legacies, play, uh, legacies uh, yeah, of performance cool. art. So, and in a very different way, it was the policies were carried in a different way than in the United States, for exactly. example. So, so, in this case, it was, of course, a multi purpose action, I mean, uh, mm -hmm. body of work that I did, but to simplify it for this talk, let's say, that was one of the ways, because also it was a way for me to learn performance by right. redoing them and, and feeling and understanding that performance was feeling something and not just looking at something. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of... When you, but just to reiterate, when you took it on, you did know, uh, uh, obviously, with the, with, uh, to restage Ana Mendieta's pieces there, but also to understand the trajectory of actions, as they're called. No, you didn't. So you, the, po the issue of the politics no. came after the fact yeah. that you. Yeah, I mean, did? I mean, I was 19, mm -hmm. so I was pretty young, okay. so I wasn't very sure what I was doing, to be honest. I mean, I knew I wanted to homage this artist through her own work, and I knew when I did the first gesture, the implication it had with the reception of it. Uh, by people saying, why are you doing that? She's an American, she's a traitor, and blah, blah, blah. So by, by the repercussion it had, like why are you talking about, not about a Cuban in Cuba, but a Cuban who left, you know? Mm -hmm. Then I realized the, poten the political potential of the work. Oh, wow, okay. And so it was right. coming out of something more exactly. benign. Right, so you actually. came to it of your own you Like know, it always happened core, in my work. Right. I always yeah. think like, Crit. and then it's like, oh, okay, sorry, you know? So this is, um, in a way, no. Should I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, um, and then I, I left. I, so oh, my body was always in the performance, but it was never me, in a way, you know? Mm -hmm. I never uh, carried this kind of political discourse like in the 80s here or in the 70s with the feminist. I'm a feminist, but not in that way. Mm -hmm. So I think at one point in the year 2000, I decided that a lot of people were putting stuff on me that I didn't care about or, or, for example, this Western tradition of the most non-performances. And I was like, I didn't know these people, I didn't know what they were talking about. But you did, did you know about the, the Latin American performances? I knew about the Cuban one at okay. that point. Then I knew about the Latin American and then I knew about the American. The, oh, wow, okay. So that was the way I came into know it. Yeah. So, and actually I knew about it when I came to study here in 97, you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I, I discover Vito and Marina and everybody. Right, which is, a, which is interesting because it was outside, uh, 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 I would say that the South American, um, uh, a kind of recourse to the body yeah. in, 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 in relationship to state censorship is a whole, it's, it's totally different. different than what I was saying about minimalism in a way, even though those things would form a very, you know, the late 60s, so the political potential yeah. They, they well, complementary. I also I realized a few things uh, during that piece. The first uh, of all is like the difference between performance in Latin America was more about living something, and here this idea of creating an image that could circulate as a huh. consequence of your performance, oh. and also doing the Anamandieta series, I discover the market because in '90 I did it for 10 years. So from the beginning of my work, I was a long term project person. Um, so you came here in 97? Uh, until 96. I did 96, it from okay. 80, 85 to 96. So I discovered the market because Le Long Gallery was not very happy because they represented, they, they, the, the state. yeah, they yeah. represented the state of Ana Mendieta in 90, 
294, I did something in Havana, in the, in the biennial, and somebody came and they told them or something, and they were really nervous, and <laughs> that was pretty intense. So actually, I was doing something that I've, you know, I encountered things I didn't know I was touching upon. So I think that was very interesting, and I think that part of my work is important because it had defined what I do after, also right. in terms of market. Yeah. You know, so. So this is, we're back in, in Havana? Yeah, this is the year 2000. And actually, this is a problem that performance has, that documentation never uh, follows the experience. Because in this case, actually, you enter a black tunnel. So you don't see any of this. I just put the lights on oh. for the sake of the audience understanding which elements you will encounter in the piece and how that will uh, feel. So in this case, I thought, um, it was 150 uh, feet long, so mm -hmm. it was pretty long. And I put sugar cane, milk sugar cane, which is a symbol of Cuba, of course. And the smell was really intense. So a lot of people did the line to get in. And then when they arrived, it's like, I don't know what is in it. It's dark, it smells weird, I'm out of here. Mm -hmm. So basically, and I think that's great for me because that was also one of the moments I was more aware of the audience as Art is an option. It's not, you know, a ple it's not always a pleasurable experience as well. It's something mm -hmm. that entails some risk, yeah. and you have to decide if you want to get or not in it. So I think that's a choice I give people yeah. in my work as well. And it's interesting. Yeah, as we go on, we'll see more the the question of participation, right? Yeah. The transfer of of yeah. of the art, you know, yeah. uh, the, the the artist performer, and then the issue of incorporating the viewer yeah, into yeah. these. But it's interesting to me the way, because late uh, a latter day version of that into an experience economy, right? Yeah. It would turn that the notion of the, the not subversive, uh, 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 but the power relations, let's say, between the artist mm -hmm. and the viewer participant, their willingness to be yeah. exploited, subjugated, to yeah. not know what's going to happen or, to them. Or the preconceived uh, agreement that you're going to please them. Yeah, right. As an artist, and I think that's a problem as exactly. well. But I think under yeah. the dictates of an experience economy, a lot yeah. of those politics have sort of evaporated. Right? Yeah. You now go and you pull, yeah. you twirl. You yeah. look. Actually, in my <laughs> survey show in New York at the beginning of this year, we had a lot of discussion with them. And, and then I said, you know what, guys? Put a sign at the entrance of the show saying you enter at your own risk, and that's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> that's it. Done. Forget about it. Because like, then you don't do anything. It's just like right. waiting for you know. I want a sign like that at my yeah. house. Just says, <laughs> you, it's like, yeah. No, no, no. Except on the inside of my house, like you oh. leave at your own risk. Oh, right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, here you walk and you see nothing. And then you see this video, and you go up, and uh, you realize Fidel is opening his uh, uniform, and there is nothing underneath. So he's showing he's not protected, he's vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, because your eyes get used to it, and also you see from the front, you, you, you start seeing people. Only four people maximum were in, allowed in the space at a time. So you start feeling there is something weird, and then you can see there are other people that are naked. And, so it was uh, a series I did about the political imaginary of places, you know, mm -hmm. how people go to Cuba and they see only one thing, mm -hmm. you know, or, or to the United States, I mean, different places, you know. And I did a series in, uh, well, this one maybe, well. and I did a series in, um, in Germany, in Colombia, in Havana, in Israel. Um, I'm the same piece? Well, it's a series. It mm -hmm. also takes 10 years because I started in 2000 and I just finishing the last one, so yeah. But, but what, what were, were the rules of the of of this piece? Sim you know, was it with sugar cane or was it with a different material? No, the, the the rule of that series is to go to a place. Only places that have dictators, like, you know, mm, like who had exposed well, themselves. Well, now that concept only. has been <laughs> covered up pretty nicely. Um, no, I think I I try to go to places that when you mention them to people you already have a series of contradict political contradictions in your mind or a, a statement, like a political, clear political statement because you have already taken some side on the discussion in a way, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And, and, you know, they are very strong. Like you say, Cuba people are very strongly, you know, 
without knowing exactly that they, they haven't been there or like Israel, like yeah. a lot of people have gone so, to Israel and Palestine, but a lot of people have not gone, but they have, you know, that as models for things, you know, or <laughs> anti-models, depending on your position. Yeah. So, and also with the history of Germany, you know, you know, so they were in Colombia, you know, they're very preconceived situations yeah. that you imagine in places. And right. So the material changed depending where I am. Yeah, because it's yeah. that's funny because the uh, uh, for Oakley's documented, yeah. which was a uh, two thousand two. Yeah. Um, and you were in that show. Uh, time and again, viewers said about the about the, the 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 show. Oh, it's political. It's a it's got lots of political art. Um, and notably, they were they were hmm. uh, uh, c collectors, which I thought was interesting. Hmm. Uh, but they. In my mind, I thought they were confusing um, politics and content. So just because something had content, uh, it, it, well, it had the or the potential to to say something, you know, that that was immediately slotted. So all you yeah. had to do was mention the mention of a place, as in, oh, yeah. the artist is from Zimbabwe. Cuba. It's like, oh yeah. yeah, right. It's like you know, so suddenly yeah. it's like any representation yeah. of the place is 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 bracketed with that, yeah. you know, kind of generic term, it's, uh, it's political. So. Yeah, I mean, I won't define Oquiz documenta, it's not my job, but I think it's true that, um, I mean, there are different ways of working with politics, and I think it's a discussion I had with somebody who teach here one time, uh, a good friend of mine, and, um, and it's very different to work politically than to work with politics, uh, po with political yeah. images. Exactly. So I think there's sure. a big complication yeah. because a lot of artists say I'm a political artist yeah. when it's in fashion, of course, when it's not, they don't talk about it. But um, uh, they're like, yeah, I'm political. I say, yeah, but what are you doing? Like poli political art is something that deals with the consequences of what you're doing, not with the images, the, images, yeah. the references. Uh, right, it's right. not about references, it's about consequences. So I think that's something I'm trying to pursue in my work. I mean, what happened with you when you get out of there? Yeah. Which is interesting yeah. in a relationship, especially now with social practices, yeah. right? To think about that as a, you know, uh, I, I think of it as a, as a kind of a fallout from a, a, mm. a, 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 a really bad decade-long hangover, <laughs> you know, in terms of politically. Right, ever since Florida 2000. Yeah, well, um, that uh, had a reason. And the, the subsequent, yeah. um, uh, the fallout in terms of how mm. uh, artists are trying to engage with that, with that question, but I see social practices as something of an upshot. I know, think, I think there are this, delayed. the big discussion about political art is can art change or not something? You mm -hmm. know, that's the question everybody who really wants to do political art. And you know, there are people who take you know, the, the stand of like, let's talk about changing images, you know, changing mm -hmm. the iconography and the, ref, the, the reference people have. And some other people want other kind of changes. So I think it's, uh, and in my case, I come from a place uh, in Cuba as an artist, you are almost brainwashed to think that you do the art not for you, but for somebody else, which is mm -hmm. an abstract somebody else that is the people. <laughs> And I'm like, okay, great. <laughs> what to quote a little now. responsibility there. Who is it? Mel Brooks in History of the World. He's yeah, right. Like when, he's, when he plays Louis the Louis the the Fourteenth, the people, the people, the people, the, the people, they stink on ice. <laughs> well, I'm almost on. there now. <laughs> so, yeah. So it's um, yeah. So do you want to talk about this piece? No, of it's come for yeah. yeah. But for example. Yeah, this piece, for example, I did in Germany, and um, it was, they invited eight artists to react to the Auschwitz trial. Uh, it was the 50th anniversary um, of it. And uh, what I did is I worked with the cabin in which the translator of the trial were speaking. And, you know, translated from German to, to English, to the judges and to the audience, etc. And what I did is I put this kind of loudspeaker and there is a red button there. And the people get in and they touch the red button and they think the microphone opens up. So they say whatever they want. They had the subject uh, uh, fate and responsibility, which is uh, something that came up again and again in the speeches of the people who were processed. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and they were talking, and that was recorded in a computer, but what people heard outside was the last words of the people who were accused. Hmm. So it was in Germany, so people were really, they saw a young person talking, but what they hear is Nazi. Right. Is horrible, this, uh, yeah. And the site for the trials again, is this, what's yeah, this? Yeah, well now it was during the show, so now you have this kind of like educational yeah. panels they had. So basically it was a school and you know they, they prepared for that. So we did it in the actual place. They did a pretty nice book because you know being Germans they did an amazing <laughs> research <laughs> on everything related to that. And the book is like this. And actually, the artworks is like one page, everybody. Mm -hmm. Everything else is like all the documents. So it's, pretty, it's a pretty nice book. Um, so it's, I kind of liked being invited to a place where art was just a justification. It was not the center. It was mm -hmm. kind of one of the possible way to talk about something. Right. So I like this kind of modesty of art as well. You know, not mm -hmm. only being hide, hidden in a way, but also being you know, part of something else. Right, with a context that's already in play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, this is because we thought we were going to talk about body too. Uh, so this is a piece I did in 2006 in which, uh, for me, it's important because it's my statement about body art. Mm -hmm. This is my statement about it, in which um, I sign a contract with another artist in which we agree in front of a lawyer in Paris, uh, in Marseille, to donate our body to the other person, whoever dies first in order to an art piece. And for me it's interesting because for performance I always have this question like, is the performance the idea, is the action, is the documentation, is the post, pre, you know, I, and I think with this piece we kind of had people say like, but well, what is the art here? The paper you sign or your idea or what we're going to wait for? Mm -hmm. Which is the piece that will hopefully arrive long, 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 long from now. No, that, uh, well, well, but the funny thing is that the guy was sick because he's super huge and he had a lot of problems and when we were like talking about the piece and saying which aspects we wanted to do or not in the contract, at one point I stopped talking to him because I felt guilty because he was really sick and I didn't want him to think I'm pushing to finish the piece before something happens to him. So I'm like, well, you call me when you can, when you feel better. <laughs> but it was pretty interesting also because we had to go with the lawyer through a lot of discussions because we wanted things that were not possible legally. And yeah. this is for me important because um, I kept doing legal right. stuff. Exactly. I was going to say this is one of those areas where yeah. performance and it's, you know, we've got a whole history of, you know, shock in a certain sense, but and shock is it specifically relates to the body. Mm. Uh, uh, but um, uh, what are those limits? Right, and so the, especially those uh, concerning you know the deceased yeah. in a way, but yeah. but but you've done a number of pieces that are specifically designed to sort of yeah. you know transgress. Yeah, but for me, the the violence in performance art, let's let's call it violence for the sake of it, it's not anymore in the body itself. It's not in the flesh and feeling it. It's mm -hmm. more psychological. Huh. You know, it's more in the psychological uh, places you put people in. At least the uh, right. way I do it, and which would be a mechanism, which would be a trend, uh, uh, um, and you mean that in terms of the the viewer? Yeah, in terms of that, because you saw this, and for example, the way we exhibit this piece is not the document. Mm -hmm. We never exhibit the document, although we have it. We exhibit a discussion between us in which we read the document and we oh. talk to the audience about it. Oh. So this piece is not presented as a photo, as a you know, it's presented as an actual discussion with the audience. Oh, wow, and right. we, every two years, have to renew the contract to make sure that we put the new, because you know, technology comes so fast that we have to make sure we are up to code, let's say, yeah. <laughs> into it. So, uh -huh. and this piece, it was done by the Tate, and, um, and it was a piece in which we hire, well, they hire uh, mounted police, and the performance was, I asked them to use all the knowledge they had uh, regarding mass uh, crowd control with the audience of Tate, which is amazing because they have so many people. Like, mm -hmm. that's the best, perfect place to do it. 
And well, it was really good because they did uh, this during two days. Um, I limited the time they could be on scene because I realized that at one point they were too aware that they were acting. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's very important every time I, I work with somebody to bring the personal, not the personal history, the, lab, uh, the, lab, the working history they have. So I don't work with people because they had, had personal problems, but because what they work on. So they came with all this knowledge already in their body. So in this case, um, and something that was interesting, when the Tate bought the piece, in the contract, which I don't know if they, I mean, they're pretty detail oriented, but um, in the contract, I make something that I'm very excited about in which I limit the institution to use the images the artist, in this case me, approve for promotion mm -hmm. or whatever. But I give total freedom to the audience to take as much documentation oh, nice. they want. Yeah, that's great. And to sell it. Oh, wow, wow. So the, 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 the Tate is forbidden to sell documentation, it's forbidden to, to yeah. if they want to sell, they have to sell the whole piece, the, the fact that they're going to redo it in right. another moment. But the audience is invited, and that's in all my pieces, actually. That was the first time I thought about it, but now it's, you wow. know. Is that like mentioned on the, on the didactic wall text? <laughs> well. Power the, to the people, y'all. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying and every time I talk in public, so people know it and let's do it. So the funny thing is, um, two things, this piece was not announced and that I'm doing a lot. Like a lot of times I don't announce my work because I want to be in the, air, the gray area of this is real or not real, is this stage or, because once people know something is a stage, first of all, it loses a little bit of impact, mm. but secondly, they start going into the artistic discourse instead of the kind of yeah, social, exactly. you know. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. people were there like, they don't know me, so I was in the audience. It was uh, pretty yeah. cool. I mean, uh, instituting crowd control yeah. without an idea about, wait, I wasn't here for a spectacle. Yeah. It's like, I, that, 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 yeah, that, that's Yeah, and I think it was important that they came, did their stuff for, I think it was four minutes or something, and they yeah. leave. And it was okay. kind of like, people were like, and it's yeah. interesting because it's the creation of the conditions yeah. of a spectacle yeah. without the thing. Hopefully, you know, so. yeah, hopefully so. And yeah, so they had no, nothing to say anything, so. Yeah, but I love that idea though, that yeah. you give the, 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 the um, and so, so many of the things with performance, for me, it exists not the, the integrity, it's an mm. integrity to the, there's the initial gesture, right? But to then say, no, 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 we're gonna do this, we have to ratify it with a lawyer, and then yeah. it's gonna be over two years, that the yeah. piece, it's like, it, in, that it exists as dialogue because it, even it's if- It's life, it's alive. You're right, exactly. It's alive, right. it's not just, yeah. it, Even as a legal contract, it has no, mm -hmm. it's like, and I would imagine- end, yeah. you, But the, 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 as my own, um, on a biographical note, just like, you know, you have kids, the issue of mortality, like Talking my- Talking to your family. Uh, yeah, oh. Talking to your family, that was the toughest part. Yeah, right, yeah. Mom, what? I'm going to do this piece when I'm dying. And I need you to say yes. Can you please be with me in this? You know, my sister. Everybody had to be aware that this is going to happen. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Exactly. But the it's idea that that might change over time. Yeah. Right. That just like in three years, you guys might decide no, the piece is no longer about because it's too much for me. Yeah. I have a different set of relationships to family, to friends. Yeah. You know. But also, it's the thing about documentation. It's different for them to say yes, but when the moment really arrives. They already say yes, they have to go with it. That's, yeah, that's going yeah. to be another kind of negotiation, but yeah. yeah. So, okay, so that's the piece. Well, yeah, in this, yeah. Mm -hmm. In this case, it was a piece I did in Poland. It's called uh, Consummated Revolution. And um, we talk with, uh, they talk with 10 uh, people who were blind, who dress uh, a military outfit, and they were, um, taking care of surveying or guarding the space, the, the, the iconic space for the socialist times in Poland, in Warsaw. So they were uh, blind and uh, I asked them not to have their glasses on, so I think oh, wow. that was also a little bit intense. Totally. The best part, it was part of a congress or something with a lot of like high profile creators and they were going to see my work and they were kind of like, Where's the work, you know? And then they saw the guys, and, they, and one guy told me like, wow, that's pretty intense. Yeah. And I never say it was my work because I want oh, him I to enjoy <laughs> it, you know? 
And then he saw a second one because they were walking one on one. But mm -hmm. then there were moments in which they coincide, which was very beautiful, like a choreographer. Right. They coincide like three or four together. And then it was like, oh, that's art, you know, that's too yeah. weird to be normal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it was very interesting for me that I could like uh, blew them too. Yeah, but I like your but the it's, experts. <laughs> it's interesting that the, the, how much, yeah. um, um, what has to be maintained in order for the work to work, mm -hmm. right? Like so suddenly to say, if 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 people are you know know that they put on their art hat. Right, mm -hmm. and so they're ready for an experience of some kind, as opposed to uh, uh, you know abrading the surface, mm -hmm. like, and and but 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 specifically w with performance and the body, like like mm -hmm. uh, that it's a place, uh, uh, a fundamental locus of habit, so that an encounter, uh, mm -hmm. a certain kind of negotiation that we would have about expectations yeah. as it literally has to be rewired, you mm -hmm. know, at a physical level. You take also, we have a history of performance now. It's not like the beginning that you do whatever and nobody has done it yet. Yeah. So you have now a whole history that you have to deal. And it's the history not only of what have been done, but how mm -hmm. people have been conditioned yeah. to encounter that kind of work. So that's, that's kind of the beginning of the work, kind of like yeah. changing those, yeah. It's, well, in the interest of time, I'm going to check, yeah. check just check yeah, the yeah. clock and say we can Do we have time? forward. Oh, yeah, we're still, we're yeah. still okay. Um, you want to talk about that or not? Yeah, let's, let's, yeah, let's talk should. a little bit about this one. Well, my work is also time-specific. I don't call it side-specific, but it's political time-specific, meaning what happened today might not work tomorrow. So they're ephemeral in that way. So this piece I did when uh, the elections... Um, two years ago, mm -hmm. and um, you know, I was hearing, I was in Chicago, I was hearing all this thing about race and, and crazy things about, you know, what happened with Obama and so, and then I decided I had a show the same time of Basel, our Basel in Miami, so, in this uh, foundation, and um, I decided to do a performance in which we hire um, an ex, uh, a veteran of two wars, um, and uh, um, he was hired as a security person in the, in the center. And he was asking people, can you please, madam, follow me? He was hyper nice, I was telling him, so that the nicer he was, the scarier he became. Uh, yes. And he was pretty nice. It's kind of like Dennis Haysbert. You he know? he you, has you an intensity that you cannot, <laughs> you know, stage, you know. And, but he was super sweet, and then he said, okay, and then he walked one person of the audience to the electricity closet, you know, the utility closet. It was pretty big, it was not that small, which is this place. And at this time there were uh, images of lynching, of the history of lynching being projected, and those people who were mostly white um, were uh, asked by this uh, guard, why do you think people want to kill, assassinate Barack Obama? And that was a very intense piece for that moment. Now it might be not so, I mean, things have changed, although crazy people still there. Uh, but I think it was interesting for me uh, to also talk about what happened, uh, how disassociated the art institutions are sometimes from reality, you know, in a way, and how come, because 99.9% .9 of the people who were uh, asked were white yeah. and middle class maybe or students sometimes yeah. but and, and I, I think I like this um, yeah it's funny the the, the issue with this piece you know um, when you, you you'd mentioned it I didn't know about the, the lynching imagery oh. um, how open uh, during the election uh, how open it was at least with the you know the Oklahoma side of my family which is quite a sprawl uh, but I like to think of them, um, uh, they're a pretty good sociological slice uh, in terms of, you know, if you do an opinion poll with them, I think they're yeah. pretty much dead on, you know. Uh, but how many of them said, oh, do you think he'll, you think he'll survive? How he'll live? You know, and it was just studied with a flat, with a flatness that was oh. kind of... Scary. Sc shocking in some sense for me, but, 
you know, again, like I was just saying, you know, we kind of post 60s chillins, like, it's like, for the older generation that lived through, it's like, oh no, people get shot, it's like, oh, they'll kill them, you know, I mean, that's that, yeah. it wasn't, it's a matter of fact, hmm. it wasn't this, you know, so right. they could ask the question without this kind of thing, and it's interesting how, how maybe, I don't know, you know, there were articles about the extra security and those kinds of things, but it was an interesting moment to have to ask, like, and just wondering, and I don't, and I don't know, you know, if it was that open amongst, you know, with, with, with friends who, who were white, I didn't, you know, to get a feel for, like, yeah. was, that, was it that open, how much of a fear that was, or an openly discussed fear. Yeah. Um, um, well, I think part of the way my work operates is I don't have the answers either, and I'm just intrigued by stuff. Like, sometimes they say, oh, you, I mean, it's, it's, you know, I wanted through the work to understand what happened. So I watch the video mm -hmm. afterwards because I want to see what people say. I wanted to understand, you know. So it's a way for me to also understand what's happening, so. So let's go to the final. Yeah, Let's go to the okay. last okay. piece here, and if you could do the, a little bit of the reading. Well, uh, yeah, this is a piece I did for the Venice uh, in 2009, Venice Biennial. And actually, the curator was the guy I did the contract with. So that's oh. perfect. Oh, who was the curator? Uh, uh, Jose, um, oh God, today I'm like, um, I, um, J. Castro. So hmm. basically, they did this, um, they did this pavilion, you know, they had like these official pavilions in the new mm -hmm. area. They have like, of course. And um, it was going to be about politics and so on. And I was thinking, I mean, Venice, I've been there three times. I exhibit three times there. And it's so hard because there is no context. Whatever you do will be banalized, aestheticized, you know, ignored in the right ways, in the wrong ways, not mm -hmm. in the right ways. And so I say, okay, what can I do? And then I decided to do a conference, which I've done a few of these pieces where I'm doing a conference performance, which is not what I'm going to do here today. And, uh, <laughs> and in this case, I read this text. Yeah. <laughs> I read this text that, to be honest, now I reread it. It's a little, I'm not a writer, but you know, I wanted to put my, my thinking on what a political artist should do and what kind of attitude we should have toward politics and art and so on. And I realized that I had to somehow illustrate the piece, so the talk, you know. Mm -hmm. So I decided to read, they had three chapters, the text, and I, every time I finished one chapter, I took um, a gun, and I played the Russian roulette. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, now it's very funny. <laughs> but it was and, real. Yeah, everything yeah. was real. Yeah, It, it was, was one, one bullet, and yeah. And then, uh, and I think, you know, it had many dimensions, this piece. Uh, one of the things I wanted to illustrate is how come if you're really going to get into it, you have to go all the way to the end. You know, mm -hmm. if you're going to get in politics, that's in art. And also, it was a, cont uh, a kind of like talking about self-sabotage as the strategy yeah. for political artists. So this was uh, one of the things, and uh, yeah. Yeah, see, could that's you read it. a little? I mean, I, I want to apologize, especially because I'm at UFC and I know how bright people here are. They write really well, so, so well. This is a, just a little piece. Um, artists should be self-sabotage. More than in art, uh, more than in an art made in politics, I am interested in a politically made art, suggesting new structures of power activation, where equality is a constant and continuous bargain. I'm not establishing mobile a structure of observation because it is true that we make art at this moment that speak of the here and now, but it is still uh, much so using a structure belonging mostly to the 19th century. Uh, also, uh, with all the political and class implication um, stemming from this. Artists should dilute their role, should establish the level and condition of self-sabotage with which they will work. Uh, the way in which artists should survive, these are just excerpts. The way in which artists should survive is by losing our memory, not considering the work we have done, nor accumulated it as a capital. We should be re ready to lose our individual history at any moment. Uh, the, the audience should not be protected. <laughs> this is very important. 
Uh, artists should, should self-sabotage within the expectation um, we have created with our work. Okay, another one is uh, curators should also transform. <laughs> I selected that for you. Because political art should deal with ethics and, and to value this discourse, we should leave the representational world and enter the world of power relationship. Then aesthetic will rather be the effective, effectiveness of these relations and beauty will be seen as the moment in which these utopias materialize. The idea I might... Uh, my art should, uh, political art should stop using references and start creating references. Artists should stop and start from scratch, from a place that is not self-nostalgic, a site where all our insecurities are present, an insecure place, an unstable place, a place that is not self-important, a place where art is not an important concept, sorry. Art should be a concept appearing later, after the fact, not, it should not be an a priori decision. Well, something like that, yeah. Were any of those the moments where you then pulled the trigger? Yeah, yeah. There were, you know, I, I took some pieces of the whole text, but... Was you know. there anyone who tried to... Yeah. To stop? The, the curator actually tried to stop me at one point, and I was like, I was so pissed off, because I was doing my piece, come on. And I was like, why is he... Did you point the gun at him? Did no, you? <laughs> no, 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 no. No, no. It's also about the responsibility you have with others. And I think, for example, I had friends in the audience and their reactions were pretty intense. There was people who were crying, there were people who were like screaming, there were people who were like uh, very pissed off because they, uh, what, uh, sometimes I don't calculate all the effects of my work and I think that's good. I mean, I try as much as possible to put myself in the audience before I do a piece, and I try to imagine the audience as varied as possible. Not mm -hmm. only one kind of audience, but, you know. But in this case, I think I was so concentrated on myself, and like, you know. And, you know, I had people who were friends of mine who were very mad, and they stopped talking to me for a while because they didn't think it was nice to them to, to be responsible it, for Oh, that. yeah, it's insanely reckless. But it's all about I that. Mean... Political art is all about where you put responsibility, you know? So I was dealing with that, and that was the way for me to exemplify, to, to put an, uh, an example, uh, to illustrate my, my point about responsibility and, and mm -hmm. political art and so on. So that was, mm -hmm. yeah. And actually, I've been invited to the Berlin Biennial, and, and the curator is like, uh, I received an email from the assistant saying, like, yeah, can, where can we locate self-sabotage, the name of that piece? I write the curator, like, I don't care about being in the, Ven in the Berlin Biennial, okay? I'm not doing that piece again. <laughs> yeah, <is> that <laughs> he was like, no, there was a mistake. We just want the images. I'm like, oh, okay, fine. And is this for the upcoming one? Yeah. Oh, that's like, our, no our, our, yeah, our turn. Okay. is yeah, the, yeah. yeah, and have you seen his piece where he does the suicide thing? No. He I'm a fan has, of his work, so. Yeah, he has a very early piece mm, where I'll he reenacts somebody. And uh, uh, yeah, that one, that one I mean, that's why drove me up a wall. You know, mm. you know. And that was actually my introduction to his, to oh. his, to his work. Well, I didn't know that, so, so I'll ask him about it. <laughs> I think let's, let's open it up for questions okay. at, this, at this point. Is, this, is that the right time? Some, let's start uh, right here in the front. You, you were truly playing Russian roulette? Yeah. So the question was, you were truly playing Russian yeah. roulette? Yeah, and I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Yeah, I mean, the funny thing is that when you are doing your work, I mean, you don't, I mean, I was, the day before the opening, the, fir the day before my performance, all I was thinking was, I haven't found yet the gun. I have not found the gun yet because it's illegal. So I was going through craziness to find a gun. And then I found the gun with somebody and I had to find the bullets with somebody else. So it was like <laughs> really, a problem because the people who were organizing it didn't want to have anything to do with it. So I had to produce the work myself in that sense. So I was really not, like now I see that it's still very strong for me because it kind of had the effect afterwards because when I'm doing it, I'm like, yeah, and that, should that work? Will people understand what I want to say? I was, that's what I was thinking, to be honest. So, but yeah, I was, I mean, I knew there was a real risk and I was willing to do it. Three. Three. Yeah. Did the organizers know that she was going to be yeah. playing Russian roulette? Well, the curator, yes. The curator knew absolutely everything. And I like to work in complicity. 
with the institution, even if the people outside do not know it. For example, I'm, I'm going to talk about it because I'm so excited about it. Okay. Okay. So I just did a solo project at the Pompidou, and for example, I did a piece in which the inside people knew what I was going to do, but the outside people were supposing that they don't know. You know, so that depends on the level of, of complicity you have with the person organizing it. And I'm too old to, to, you know, I know that this is the way it's happening. And uh, for example, what I did is they invite me to react to the collection, to, the, to do something for seven days to, to react to the collection. And I call, I, I email all the artists in the collection and ask uh, permission to reproduce, either by them sending me the original or by me pirating the work in the collection, their pieces. So in order to be inside the museum, which is the good thing, you had to say yes to be outside the museum, which is all these reproduction, all these pirate copies were sold for one euro outside the museum. In this planet they have. So I think, uh, and for example, the letter I wrote them, it was a lawyer who saw it, who is the lawyer from the Pompidou. It was uh, you know, the boyfriend of somebody who is also a lawyer who works there. you know. You know, they were very careful that they are not involved in it, but they knew it. Of course they knew about it. And the funny thing, one artist answer, because the letter I sent only under my name, I never had them. And one answer was, came with copy to the people of the Pompidou who were responsible of the event. And the guy is like, how can you do, like it was kind of like whistleblower, but the wrong way. <laughs> you know, it was like, how can you do that? They know that, like, you know, even the artists didn't know. And I think it was important at the moment to do that because for me the piece was about putting the artists into thinking how much they collaborate with the system, you know. And if they knew, the system knew, it was like, oh yeah, then I give you the permission, of course. You know, and a lot of people say no, you mm -hmm. know, and some people say no because my work, that edition has been sold, I don't want to piss off collectors, and then The funny thing, the collectors came, they were like, cra that was like drug. Collectors were like, crazy, they wanted the whole collection, it was like people were really, because I didn't release every, all the titles, it was 87 titles, I didn't release them all the same day, I was producing at the same time the show was happening, and they were like calling the vendors like, what is out today, tell me, like who's, so you know. So do you guys understand the nature of the piece? No, maybe right? not. There, 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 the, 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 it was a, Tanya would mount an exhibition of, of, of video art. Yeah, inside. In, the, inside the Pompidou. No. Uh, but but in order to to you could be included in the exhibition. But in order to be included in the exhibition, you have to be part of the collection. You yeah. In order to be part of the oh, you had to be you, in the permanent collection of the Pompidou. Yeah, exactly. Right. You were in the permanent collection of the Pompidou. So it's the Pompidou's collection of video art. In, in Tanya said, okay, I want I want to to cert, look at what you've got. I want to contact all the artists that you've got in your video art collection, and I want to ask them if they would give me the right for one week to make bootlegs. As of, many as I want. As many as she wants, seven days, to do with what she, she can do what, what, whatever it is that she wants to do with them. So she sent this letter out to the artist and got a range of responses. Yeah. Yes, no, you know, yeah. cease and desist. Yeah. Everything. The best, the best answer was a, a, a Chinese artist who say, why are you asking? Yeah. <laughs> he didn't get it. I mean, come on, Chinese. Like, 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 why are you asking? Like, didn't get it. And but then there were all the people who were like, very yeah. weird. Yeah, but then they have the bootlegs out, sold out in front of the Pompidou. Yeah. But also you had the actual, you had the vault of the Pompidou open, right, yeah. where the video yeah. collection is. Yeah. So you could see, like, here I are the yeah. originals that you would yeah. see, right? So the issue of... So you went, you know, basically the institution became the window to promote what was going to be sold outside, yeah. basically, you know. Yeah. But I, I so. like to think of it, you know, you, you go to the Museum of Modern Art and, you know, I don't know if they, they still have them, the, the, the guys who are selling the African masks out yeah. in front. Like, here, you did same thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's just video. <laughs> We've seen before, it's the ones who would say, yeah, I don't, I don't, that's okay. I don't mind if you do it. Just, yeah. what's the resolution? Like, I, yeah, you know, yeah, I don't mind your boot. Like, I don't want to be pixelated. Like, <laughs> I had people who were like, you can do as many copies as you want, but please copy this DVD I'm sending you with this quality. This is it. I'm like, okay, fine. 
And it's funny because a collector came, a very well-known collector from Paris came, and she bought the pieces, bought everything. She wanted to make sure she had the whole collection. So there are a few people who have the whole collection yeah. of it. And actually she came after with me because inside we had like the list of works. So it was maybe, they were available in the place to look, but also yeah. available to buy. So it was kind of, and she made me write which one I pirate. Wow. So she really wanted to make sure in which one I had more hands on, like more, because I did everything. I don't want to right. put somebody else on the stage. So I was like with my camera in the library and, you know, and um, it was pretty cool, demon. I think at the beginning, the first day, the first day or two, they were buying the pieces of the collection. Because they, I have to be honest, uh, Pompidou is pretty good at their collection. They have uh, a lot of them digitized and accessible in, in one room, little room in the second floor. But for me, it was not that. It was about how come the institution is not good anymore for art. Mm -hmm. You know, my statement was like how much is the institution already working the terms they have, mm -hmm. you know? And, and I think the first day was like that. They were like, oh, who, oh yeah, Thomas, oh, he should, oh yeah, yeah, what he write? Oh yeah, I want this, I want and, and then they realized later, and there were some people who were more savvy in terms of collecting, who realized they were buying for one euro two pieces. It's pretty cheap. Yeah. So, and actually I was telling Hamza that it was very complicated because the last day, also a couple that is very well known, came as collector and they wanted to buy the actual piece of uh, the cloth the cloth or the vendor and the the dvds we had inside the show because inside the show i also put a vendor so people knew that there was somebody outside and they were the point of information and they were calling where are you okay there are two collectors going there you know it was pretty nice and uh and they wanted to buy the fetish and i say no you know and i said i don't even hear I don't even want to know how much I know. The piece is against that, so. Yeah, the piece is the idea. Yeah, but you it's know, also against right. the way of how falsely we're trying to, to migrate if the possibilities of a medium yeah. of a, to make it collectible.